certified check for one hundred and eighty three dollars and uh, and twenty eight cents one eighty three twenty eight yes and make it payable to the Hartford Wholesale Produce Company the Hartford Wholesale Produce Company yeah. yes, Mr. I'm sure glad to get home. Yes. Keep that down there, Fred. Yes. Okay. East of Phoenix. Oh, Ruth. Yeah, I know. Hey, forward passport, please. My checkbook positively says $11.21. Knew what happens? This check is thrown back in my lap. For five years I do business here, now I should get insulted. You didn't make any checking deposit last Saturday, only savings. Oh, is that so? <laughs> well, I'm laughing. I was telling Mrs. Ginsburg this morning that someday I'll be a millionaire like this Norman Sheffield. Goodbye, Mr. Ginsburg. No. Oh, have a heart, Ruth. I get no pleasure out of life. For the fifth time, no. Just you and me, alone. I thought that was coming. No, thanks. Well, why not? One session of your football technique lasts a lifetime. You might as well give up, frog face. I'm going to ask Ruth out this Saturday myself. Any fleas? Back in your cage, gorilla. The girls fluttered when he asked them to dance. Scram, Rue. How about it, baby? You take a lot for granted. Takes a lot to satisfy me. Shall we make a hot Saturday of it? Well, that depends upon the degree of heat. You can run the temperature. What do you say? The whole crowd's going out to Willow Spring. OK. I'd be bored to death staying in town. There you are, Eva. Now run along and drive your Aunt Minnie around for her shopping. Of course, Father. Thanks a lot. All right. Father, may I have the car tonight and Saturday night? Oh. <clears throat> it doesn't seem proper for you to take the car out at night so much. It may lead to undesirable... Why, Undesirable Father. gossip. It's indiscreet. You know I'd never do anything unbecoming. No, 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 of course. I. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess it'll be all right. <laughs> Thanks, dear. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, Eva. Hello, Archie. What's on your mind? Well, look, Eva. Connie's taking Ruth Saturday, isn't he? So what? Well, how about you going with me? It's a date. Oh, that's swell. You haven't been out with me for a month. Saturday after lunch. Dad's giving me the closed car. Better yet. My feet get cold when I park in those roadsters. Hey, hey. And I said to the Reverend Hello. Botts that I... How, How are, are you, dear? dear? How do you do? And I told the Reverend Botts that I thought the city council should call on that rumor Sheffield and demand that he leave town. <laughs> the idea of bringing her out here to his summer home and living with her openly is a disgrace to the community. You're absolutely right. He's a vile influence, yes. too. Look! Roma. What? Look. Well, we must be going. Goodbye. 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 I'll only be a minute, Camille. All right. Oh, good morning, Mr. Sheffield. Hello, Connie. How are you? Uh, just fine, thank you. I'm pretty busy. Good. Are the bank still solvent, eh? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Smith. Yes, Mr. Smith. I reject your statement personally. The balance is correct. Good morning, Miss Brock. Oh, good morning. Uh, perhaps you failed to deduct the uh, uh, government tax. 
Yes, there's a two-cent tax on every check you write. Oh, no, no, not just the Democrats. The Republicans have to pay it, too. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Smith. Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Sheffield? Just talk to me, will you? I'd like to hear you talk. I haven't time. Yes, I've done as that. Somehow, every time I come into the bank, you always manage to be busy. <laughs> you know, I think I'll phone next time. Phone? Well, you seem pretty patient with Mr. Smith. Did you ever talk to Mr. Smith? <laughs> no, I imagine it must be quite an experience. It is. You know, I like your hair done that way. It's very becoming. Did you have any business to transact? Come to think of it, I did. Look, I want this check deposited. 30,000. Checking or saving? Checking, by all means. Third window down, Mr. Billings. Look, Miss Brock, don't you think you could take personal charge of my account? Why? Well, I'd, uh, I'd have an excuse to become better acquainted with you. Second, I've already mentioned your hair. Third, you have blue eyes. Fourth, Is this an inventory? Oh, now, look, I'm serious. Let me go on, won't you? I'm more interesting when I'm serious. Uh-uh. You're considered much too dangerous for local consumption. I see. Ruled out, eh? Uh-huh. Well, well, Connie Billups seems more fortunate. Oh, I imagine he changed places with you most any time. Incidentally, it looks as though there's a man wanted. Oh, I know, I know. She's carrying in here, thumping her compact on the top of the car door, isn't she? Yes. <laughs> you know the enamel's getting all worn out there? Oh, I guess I'll have to go and see what I can do about it. Say, what's the matter? Does everyone in this town have high blood pressure? <laughs> oh. Well, how was she today? Surely business, my dear. Oh, yes? Selling short or bulling the market? <laughs> I suggest we stop talking about Wall Street, huh? If you think you can park me out here while you go in there and flirt with some dizzy little bank clerk, you're crazy. I'm crazy. Oh. Did she catch the train all right? Yes, sir. Good. Any parting message? Yes, sir. She said you could go to the devil. Well, that's nice of her. You know. Oh, thank you, sir. Don't mention. Did she say anything else? Well, yes, sir. She said she was going to Florida on Mr. Howard's yacht. Good. She'll probably get a nice coat of tan. Yes, sir. Oh, that'll be all, Frank. 994. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's here. For you, Connie. For me? Okay. Say, hey, keep your eye on him, will you? I don't want him pushing him in with his hand. Yeah? Oh, hello, Mr. Sheffield. Yeah, that landlady usually knows where everybody is. Say, Connie, I've noticed your crowd goes out to Willow Springs every Saturday. Yeah, that's the only excitement there is around this burg. Well, why don't you all drop in here Saturday afternoon? There's lots of drinks and I'll rummage up some food. Say, that'd be swell. You bet I'll invite them. That's fine, then I'll expect you. Stay as long as you like, no limit. All right, goodbye. Boy, this Saturday's gonna be some Saturday. What's up? That was rumor Sheffield wanted me to invite the crowd out to his place for a party. Well, we can't go out there. The town had burned down to the ground if we took the girls within a mile of that guy. Oh, stop griping. Nobody needs to see where we're going. We can take the side road up Willow Creek into his place. Well, how about the girls? Do you think they'll go? Sure, they'll eat it up. Yeah, I know, but... Oh, listen, oh. Archie. You start griping every week about spending three bucks for bootleg gin. Here you got a swell chance to get some real liquor for nothing. Say, that is an idea, isn't it?
Be out in a minute. I'll give you odds. It's 15 minutes. 50 cents to a dollar. Take it. Hello, Dad. Hello, Ruth. It's funny, I'd forgotten it was Saturday. Until you saw this pay envelope, eh? Well, what is it this time? Well, to tell the truth, uh, an unusual thing happened this morning. I found that I'd run out of cigars. Oh, uh -huh. you better start smoking cigarettes. Thanks. Ruth, your mother's on the warpath. in this house again. I want you to change your dress and go to the attic right away and get them blankets out of the trunk and hang them in the sun. And you better look after the winter clothes, too. Oh, Mother, I can't. Not now. I promised to walk with the crowd. Well, that's no excuse when there's work to be done. Well, I didn't intend it as an excuse. You know Saturday's the only time I ever get to go anywhere. I can think of lots better ways of spending it than dancing and flirting till all hours of the night with a lot of good-for-nothing young puppies. Well, I can't. Not in this town. You mark my words, young lady. You'll live to regret it. And you won't get any sympathy from me, either. All right, man. You don't have to tell me. We owe him $3.43, and the milk company called up today. Oh, yes, Mother, I know. <clears throat> Where's the rest of it? Oh, I gave $2 to Father. Oh, you did. <laughs> Henry! That new pair of shorts I just bought. New shorts? No, I haven't seen them. Hey, let go of me. What's the idea? <laughs> Bottoms up, Mrs. Ah. Van Astervilt. Oh. Uh -huh. oh. I didn't mean it. Oh, I didn't mean it. Have a heart for you, sis. A brief let go. Go. And then silence. worse for wear. Oh, all right. That's the way you feel about it. Nobody wears it nowadays anyhow. Oh, good afternoon, Senator. Have a cigar. Oh, thank you. Any mail from the administration? No, just a letter from Chicago. That's funny. I wrote Herbert last week about that river project. Well, he may write you next week. He'll probably telegraph. That's very possible. Have a cigar, Connie. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks again, Senator. Don't mention it. You know this public life is very strenuous? No wonder you smoke so many cigars. Well, friends, you know. Yes. Twelve minutes. Pay up, Connie. Right you are. Here. Here you are, Dad. Better lay in a fresh supply. Oh, thanks. Have a good time. The chances are in our favor. Say, Ida. Where's that two dollars? Wait to hear this, Ida. Who do you think's getting here on the 515? Who? Bill Fadden. He is? Yes, listen. Looking forward to seeing the old stamping ground again. Going to camp on you Saturday night, unless you lock me out. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine seven years have changed Ruth a lot, but somehow I still expect to find her in pigtails. Regards, Bill. Isn't that just like Bill? 
I wonder if he's changed much. Oh, it'll be fine to see him again. I just wish Ruth had more friends like Bill. Wealthy, good family, and he's got a fine position, too. Mm -hmm. Ruthie? Ruthie! He's gone already. She would be. Well, she can see Bill oh, tomorrow. That's it. Go right ahead and stick up for her. Claire's that two dollars. Well, uh, I'll need that, you know, to entertain Bill. Oh, well, I swung. Barbara away. One minute more. Come on, babies, bite. Don't you recognize caviar when you see it? Grab on. Yes, so they're doing. Now, look, would you mind if I do you a great favor? Yes, but go on. Well, if you use the word Romer instead of Mr. Sheffield, I'll promise to call you Ruth. I'm overcome. Splendid, then you need a drink. Come on. Oh, oh how cute. I'll take vanilla. Well, vanilla it shall be, lady. Hello, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Oh, Connie, here you are. Thanks for organizing the party. Why, it was no effort at all. I could hardly wait till Saturday. One vanilla coming up with courtly gesture, lady. Say, that was great stuff. Bottled and bond, I bet. Mm, glad you like it, Connie. There's a lot more. I'm afraid you won't be saying that by nightfall. She isn't making much of a play for Roma. Well, it looks like he's enjoying it. Mm. Probably enjoyed that Renault girl, too. Hey, one long. Bring it two drinky. Belly tall. Savvy? What will it be, gentlemen? Scotch, bourbon, or cognac? Two cognac. Hello, Eve. Have a drink? No, thanks. How are they going? Not fast enough to keep me from dancing with you. Uh, let's make it later, Eve. Ruth is waiting. Oh, let Ruth entertain Roma for a few minutes. You didn't bring us here to high hatches, did you? Oh, don't look at it that way, Eve. Sure, I want to dance with you, but... Well, now's your chance. I've been wanting to thank you for having Roma invite us here. I thought Archie said you were shocked. Well, well, I didn't know it was going to be like this. Well, what do you say? Okay. Oh, come on! <laughs> That's your boat, isn't it? Yes, Frank's been taking some of the crowd for a ride. Like to go down to Watson? Yes, I'd love to. Okay, come on. Sure, lots of lovely rocks and nice little mud puddles. Oh, that doesn't sound very pleasant. You must be looking for work. Oh, uh, lady, lady, will you give me a job? I haven't had work since... Since uh... Camille left town? Got a crust dragging her away from the party. Don't be a chump all you like. She probably did the dragging. She did you any day for Roma. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll find out when I get back. <laughs> Lovely back, darling. Pleasant here, isn't it? Oh, yes. It would have been a shame for you to have missed it. I'd begun to think you weren't coming to the party. Well, I've begun to think I didn't. There, now, you see? We'll have to start all over again. Pleasant here, isn't it? Mm-hmm. How are your folks? 
Oh, father smoking, mother fuming. Worried about you? About me? Mm. Of course not. No, I'm supposed to be murdering moths. Mother hates for me not to. Oh, what a wise mother. She knows what the moths do when the flame is away. Oh. Does she know you're with me? I'm with Connie. Didn't you know? Well, all's fair, you know. Why, I'd murder just to see the soft green shadows through that pine tree on your lovely hair. Oh, a girl's pretty helpless alone with you. Why? Oh, nothing to resent but compliments. And they're said to paralyze a lady. Really? Well... You know, your hair is like the sun glowing on the waters. And your eyes are like the evening sky that send their first stars down to lovers. Your lovely arms are... Isn't this one feeling just a little paralyzed? Oh, goodness me, Mr. Sheffield, yes. But I recover just like that. <laughs> I think I'm able to be up and about. In fact, I'd like a wee cocktail. Oh, please don't go so soon. Well, a girl can't go on forever calling a little policeman. All right, I'll promise to help me to be good. But there's the most divine little spot further along the shore. Let me show you it, will you? Promise I can have it without a stroke of paralysis? Yes, you can see it without a stroke of any kind. Come on, be a good winner. Oh, I can't resist you, except when you're dangerous. Well, it's about time you're getting back. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Connie. I guess it's entirely my fault. Yeah, I thought it would be. Yes, well, you see, we, uh, we got to talking about mutual friends. Say, Connie, did, uh, did you ever read Alice in Wonderland? Say, what are you trying to do, kid me? Hey, take over there! Don't fail us, Robert! Has everyone gone? Well, nearly everyone. They're over at the spring. Gee, I'm sorry they broke up so early. Well, they all want you to come over there. No, I don't think I will. Thanks awfully, Connie. Make it snappy, Ruth. I'll go get the car. All right. I'm sorry, Connie acted that way. Oh, I don't blame him. Archie! Oh, hello. Oh. Uh, uh, well, you know, I could have bet that this thing wouldn't hold two quarts, but it holds four. Look. Well, Archie, I'm glad you're still here, because I want you to do me a favor. Well, sure. <laughs> well, look, I can't join the crowd over the springs. Would you mind taking these two quarts over with my compliments? Oh, sure I will. Well, I've got to get the car. Gee, thanks a lot, Romer. Oh, it was swell. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. So long, Ruth. That was awfully decent of you, Roma. Oh, sometimes I surprise myself, really. Oh, so you finally got back. Yes. You sound surprised. Did you expect me to be gone all night? Well, dear, I didn't know. You see, a girl in your position can afford to be so much more unconventional in her pleasures than I could. What's the matter? Oh, shut up. I didn't say anything. I know you didn't. Well, then why did you tell me to shut up? Well, how do you like my guest room? Light, airy, comfortable, and modern. Why look further? 
wouldn't be interested in a short-term lease. Goodbye, Robert. Bye-bye. Well, this is once you didn't keep me waiting. I didn't dare. too long. Or have you run away from the crowd enough for one day? Oh, Connie, why do you keep harping on that? You know, I'd love to go out on the lake. Okay. Let's get out before somebody else horns in on the ride. Connie's a fool. Why? Letting Ruth drag him off outside, just like the rest of the fellows are chasing. He's no fool. <laughs> Enjoy your ride? How many nights enjoy it? Oh, it's much nicer out here. I'll say it is. Let's have one of your best putt putts. This is it. Hop right in, beautiful, and pick yourself a nice soft seat. Okay. too far away. No, I'm all right where I am. Can't you ever enjoy a boat ride without kissing somebody? Oh, all right. Pretty cold. Well, yes, it is. all day, are you? Oh, Connie, be your age. You know I don't like that caveman stuff. Oh, you love it, beautiful. I came out here to cool off, not to have a wrestling match. Oh, I see. You like Romer's petting better than mine, huh? I don't like the way your ears are put on. Let's go back. Make a sap out of me twice in one day, nothing doing. I've got a little coming to me. 
for a boat ride. Marlene Dietrich? Oh, don't play dumb. You've been on these parties before. Ruth. Here, take this cushion. I'm too tired to move. Come on. I suppose you're wondering why I'm here. Well, you're here. I can't think of anything more important. Ruth! Ruth! Would it interest you to know that I wanted you ever since I first saw you in the bank? You're supposed to see things you want in banks. Yes, and the moment you go to get them, burglar alarms start ringing all over town. May I pay you a compliment? Oh, no, no, not one of those haymakers. It's just this. I've known many women. Never have I met one so warm, so desirable, and so unapproachable. You know, I surprise myself admiring the mind in you. You don't mind my mentioning it since it's there, do you? As a matter of fact, it all comes down to this. A man would have to be very stupid to touch you without first knowing your heart. There, you didn't think brains could do that for you, did you? I hadn't given it much thought. Uh, is Listerine good for brain? Love, they tell me, is better. If it lasts. Well, what does it matter, as long as one finds happiness? Did you ever regret being happy? No. But I would if that happiness meant being sneered at, and scorned, and talked about. You don't know what it is to live in a small town. You can only play on the surface. 
And even if you're honest about that, you're not safe from a lot of evil-minded people. The only security in a place like this is settling down and getting married. Marriage, ownership, dreadful thought, isn't it? Mm, one drink for Sheffield. Say, hey, tell me something. How could you be so morbid after what happened last night? What about last night? Well, for heaven's sakes, girl, don't you remember where you were? I was home in bed asleep at 10 o'clock. Oh, no, no, no. There must be some mistake. You and I were in Venice. Mm-hmm. And our rooms opened onto the gardens and the Grand Canal. And we watched the moon play across the walls. And listened to that gondolier singing as he paddled down the canal. Roma. Mm-hmm. A check of yours for $10,000 came into the bank today, made out to Camille Renault. It was torn. You wanted us to put it through, didn't you? Yeah. You know, Ruth, you're strangely honest. Sometimes painfully so. Will you make me a promise? What is it? Well, if ever you find out you're wrong about what you think is security and happiness, will you let me know? Even if I'm in Switzerland, will you send me a cablegram? Well, I'm not wrong, but I'll promise. Good, let's drink to it. To what? To your being wrong. Oh, no, thank you. Somebody's coming. Oh, sit still, it's just a car passing. Hello, Connie. I couldn't imagine who it was. Yeah, I bet you could. Where's Ruth? Why, hasn't she been with you? Quit stalling. Now, who was the girl I just saw go in the house? You know, Connie, you seem to have an amazing curiosity. Yeah, enough to find out if that was Ruth. Don't you think it's more agreeable here on the veranda? No, I don't. I suppose those aren't Ruth's shoes, huh? Connie, I think you ought to go into town. Yeah, well, Ruth's going with me, you big stiff. You know, it's much cooler in town. You'll remember this. Yeah, that's right. I always remember pleasant experiences. Oh, Ruth. Ruth. The young lady has gone. Where? She told Frank you wish him to drive her home. You forgot these. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night. Look. Thank you. So she ditched Connie again and went back to see Roma. Yeah, it sure looks like it. Mm, and afterwards he sends her to town in his car. Why didn't she stay all night? Hot potatoes.
Who are you? Ruth. believe it's you. It is. Are you sure? Turn around. Mm-hmm. Haven't changed a bit. Hmm. Where are your pigtails? Oh, well, a girl has to grow up and bob her hair sometime. <laughs> well, go on, eat your pie and tell me all about it. What are you doing here and why? I've got to do a geological survey for the oil company. Where? Up around Black Mountain. Mm. I want to pitch camp in the old Indian cave. Oh. So you turned out to be a geologist. Yeah. Anticlines, fossils, sedimentary deposits and all. Mm. Sounds awful. It's a great game, Ruth. I'm out in the field ten months a year. You still afraid of girls? <laughs> no. I'm not very used to them. Never see any from one month to another. Oh, and couldn't figure them out if you did. Well, anyway, I... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see you again. A lot. Did you have a good time tonight? Sure. Great. Dance? Uh-huh. Your father told me they built a new dance hall right down on the lakefront. Yeah. Uh, Willow Grove or something. Yeah. Now, that's too bad. I guess the lake isn't the same anymore. The same? <laughs> I was just remembering how peaceful it used to be. Well, I guess you'll find it changed all right. Oh. Good night. See you in the morning. See you at breakfast. How about a date this afternoon? Why don't you call up Ruth? She ought to be very interesting now. Oh, I'm fed up with her. Why? Because she ran out on you again last night? Well, how did you know? Because I saw her coming home in Roma Sheffield's car. You did, huh? What time? Oh, about 2.30 this morning. Ruth Brock. What time did she leave you? Why, uh, when we left the dance, she ducked while I went out to get a boat. Well, that was only about 10 o'clock. Didn't she even go out in the boat with you? Well, if she had, she would have come back with me, wouldn't she? Then she must have been at Sheffield's house for more than four hours. How awful. All right, Connie, come out about 2.30 this afternoon. Yes, goodbye. Do you mean to say that you actually saw Ruth Brock in Roma Sheffield's car? Yes, Auntie, isn't that terrible? Well, she must have been at his house for more than four hours. Oh, I, I didn't think Ruth was that kind of a girl. Oh, I've seen it coming for a long time. She's always been encouraging men. Number, please. Hello. Hello, Matilda. Matilda, I've just heard the most awful news. Ruth Brock was in Roma Sheffield's house with him alone last night. Yes, yes. Uh, from about 10 until 2.30. And then he sent her home to town in his car. Yes. Number, please. Number, please. Number, please. An affair with Romer Sheffield. Yes, yes. I'll call you back later. Number, please. Yes. Someone saw Miss silhouette against the curtain of the upstairs bedroom. He was holding her in his arms. Yes. She was there for 3.30. She spent the night with him. They saw her coming into town this morning in his car. Just at dawn. Number, please. How long are you going to be gone, Bill? Oh, about a week. I want to make some pictures and maps and get some rock specimens. I wish you didn't have to go so soon. It's probably just as well. If I didn't, I think I'd find myself falling in love with you again. Again? Sure. When we were kids, I used to think you were swell, in spite of the pigtails. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but now you know better, don't you? I'm beginning to doubt it. I never forgot you. I always remembered you too, Bill. But memories can't turn to love in one day. All ready, Mr. Patton. Right with you. Wish you could drive up and spend an afternoon exploring with me. Around Black Mountain with compass and camera. That's about it. You think you could? Oh, Bill, I'm a working girl. But I may be able to get a day off. Good, I hope so. Headquarters, the cave. Bye. Bye, Bill. Yes, indeed, and I believe every word of it. That isn't a doubt. Oh, Mrs. Winchell, Mrs. Starr, how do you do? Darling. Oh, Miss Brock. I've decided to dispense with your services. I'm giving you two weeks' salary in place of notice. But why, Mr. Randolph? There isn't enough work for Mr. Franklin to need you any longer. That's not the reason, Mr. Randolph. I've had plenty of work to do. What is it? I don't care to argue the matter with you, Miss Brock, except to say that the moral conduct of our employees is a very important consideration. That's all, Miss Brock. Dad. Hello, Ruth. Where's Mother? Out somewhere. Well, what's the matter, honey? You've been crying. I just got fired. You did? What for? Well, it seems I'm an immoral woman. And immoral women shouldn't work in banks, you know. They might corrupt the young dollar bills. Did Ned Randolph call you that? What are you going to do? I'm going to make him eat every word of it. The lying, ungrateful dog. I can't No, no, stop. Dad, it wouldn't be any use. So you got yourself fired from the bank and came sneaking home. Bad news sure travels fast. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Mother, I didn't do anything Don't that... you stand there and lie to me. 
while the whole town's talking about you and sneering at you. I might have known you'd do something to disgrace the family, painting your face and staying out nights with a lot of rotten young whelps. You would end up in a vile affair with Rumor Sheffield. Why, Mother, how can you say I know that's a lie. Is it? Well, ask her. Weren't you alone at his house with him at night? Didn't his car bring you into town? Yes, but I... Oh, don't you... <laughs> don't you try to defend her. All my life, I've sweat and slave trying to make a decent woman out of her. To give her every advantage. And now look. Look how she repays me. Oh, how are we going to live? Where's the next dollar coming from? <laughs> so... That's all I mean to you. You're not worried about the scandal. It's just money. No one will hire me. I... I'm sorry. You were drenched and all in. I thought that... You don't have to apologize, Bill. You were ice cold and I couldn't bring you to. You better drink this now. I tried to give you some before, but it choked you. Are you all right now? But I thought I'd shake to pieces before I got up here.
You probably staved off a grand case of flu. You shouldn't have tried to climb in this storm. I didn't care about the rain or anything. I just wanted to see you. You wanted to see me that much? Yes. Don't cry, Ruth. Please. I can't help it. I never wanted to see anyone so much in all my life. I'm glad you feel that way. Ruth, it's, it's been the same with me. I'm a clumsy ox around women. I don't know how to say it, but I've been in love with you for a long time. I wanted to tell you yesterday and lost my nerve. Last night, I couldn't sleep thinking of you. I need you, Ruth. Are you going to laugh at me or marry me or cry some more? I'm going to do all three at once. Bill. Yes? Can we be married right away? Sure. We'll tell you family tonight. Ruth ought to be home by now. I'm worried. Driving around in the rain. Worrying? Well, you better stop that right now. I've worried all my life, and you see all the thanks I get. I'm through. Alice? Of course I love you, Bill. Alice, come to dinner. In a minute. You swept me off my feet and carried me away, swooning. Right now. Oh, all right. Soup's getting cold. Ida, Ruth will be here any minute now. Well, I'm not going to wait dinner any longer. Ruth? Yes, Mother? Well, it's about time you were... Why, Bill, we didn't expect you back so soon. This is a surprise. We've got a bigger one for you. Ruth and I are going to get married. Bill, that's great news. I'm tickled to death. Have a cigar. Thanks. Oh, Ruth, how marvelous. And they are well. My baby. We're so happy to welcome you into the family. Oh, he's not in the family yet, Mother. Well, of course, but won't be long now, will it, Bill? Nobody has long engagements nowadays. <laughs> well, we're going to file application tomorrow, Mother. We'd have to wait three days anyway, so Bill's going back up to the mountain to finish up his work. Oh, that's fine. And Sunday we leave for Chicago. Well, oh, Annie, Annie, come in here, dear, and congratulate your sister. She's going to get married. To Bill? Yes, dear. Oh, gee. Annie? Ruth gets the best of everything. Can't you wait a little while, Bill? Maybe. <laughs> sure he will, won't you, Bill? Are you happy? Oh, so much so. I, I don't know what I'd do if I ever lost you. You couldn't lose me. <laughs> you talk like a little girl afraid of the dark. Well, sometimes the dark can be pretty awful when you're alone. You're going to be with me from now on. And we're taking the night to celebrate. The world is yours. Where do we go? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere. Oh, we'll meet you too. We ought to go. Say, there's some of the crowd we went to school with. Bull Khan. Eva, Joe! Why, it's Bill Fadden. Hello, Bill. Hi, Bill. Howdy. He's with Ruth. Let's go over. Sure. Okay, come on. Let's go. Come on, Jan. I wonder when he got back. <laughs> Hello, Joe. How are you, Bill? Look, he's growing out of short pants. <laughs> what are you doing, Hello, Bill? Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. 
Why, hello, Eva. How are you? Fine, thanks. Hello, Ruth. My, it's nice to see you again, Bill, after all these years. <laughs> You're handsomer than ever. I shaved this morning. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you at the bank, Ruth, dear. You'll have to go on missing her. We're going to get married Sunday. You are? Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations, yes. Ruth. Thank congratulations, you. you big hound, stealing our prize, gal. <laughs> we all resent you, Mr. Fadden. I don't blame you, much. Go telephone for the hearse, Archie. Get the fireman's band. We'll have a wait. I'll go you one better than that. We're going out to Willow Springs tonight to celebrate. Why don't all of you join us and we'll make a real party of it? How about it, Ruth? Uh, oh, that'll be fine. <laughs> yes, won't it? Well, well, what about females? Invite anyone you want. The more the merrier. No way, we'll ring in the whole crowd. There isn't very often a big butter egg man comes to town to give a party. <laughs> no, we only had one, and that was last Saturday. We'll try to make this one tough it. So she hooked Bill Fadden, huh? Isn't that just lovely? You know who we'll invite, don't you? Who? Sheffield. Oh, Connie, you're a genius. No, I just want to see a few people fall over backward. When's this surprise coming off? Don't get excited. It'll be here. Just keep your eye on the door. It better be good. It will be. I wish we could dance every dance together, Bill. So do I. Catch up a little on the seven years I've missed. I hate to think of all the times you've been here dancing in some other fellow's arms. Jim? Who wouldn't be? Oh. Hello, lovebirds. Having a good time? We're not exactly bored. Don't forget, Bill, the next dance is mine. I won't. You're at Willow Springs, you know, Bill. You have to take your girl for a boat ride. Is that the custom? Oh, that's a very old custom. Is that true? Oh, why, he's exaggerating. Have you gone riding much? Why, of course, lots of times. Why? Oh, nothing, I guess. That's him, all right. So that's what Connie had up his sleeve. I think it's a dirty trick. You said it. Oh, where's Miss Randolph's table? She's with the party at the end table. Thanks. Hello, Roma. Hello there. Looks like a good party. It will be from now on. <laughs> where's Ruth? Oh, she's dancing somewhere. Yeah. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Bill, let's step away from the crowd and get a boat. Now? Yes. We've got to dance with the others sometime. Well, we can do it later. I want to be alone with you some of the evening. All right, honey. We'll duck out as soon as we finish this dance. May I cut in? Uh, uh, oh, Bill, uh, this is Mr. Sheffield. Mr. Fadden, my fiancé. Mr. Fadden, my congratulations. Thank you. Uh, may I finish this dance? Certainly. Thanks. Well, 
Well, there's not much to say, is there? No. Well, I've never lied to you, so I'm not going to congratulate you or wish you happiness. Just good luck. Thank you. Seems like a fine fellow. Oh, yes, he is. You know, I wouldn't have come if I'd known. Eva didn't say anything about it. Eva invite you here? Yes. You know, when I came here tonight, I didn't think our first dance would be our last. I hope it's a long one. Well, you see, it wasn't. Do you mind if I leave you here? Aren't you coming back to the table? No, thanks. I think I'll just step out of the picture. I've caused you enough embarrassment already. You're very kind. Oh, you shouldn't say that. It hurts my vanity. Hi, Archie. So Romer was your surprise. Yeah, did you see Ruth's face when she spotted him? She pushed Bill all over the floor trying to keep him from me. Yeah, I saw it. You healed. For two cents, I'd push your face down into your neck. Oh, you don't like it? No, I don't like it. Ruth's had enough trouble getting fired from the bank and having the whole town in her neck. Give her a break. She's engaged to be married. Why should you try and bust it up? Ah, oh, somebody ought to do the sap a favor and tell him he's getting a second-hand bargain. I still hope that someday I'll have to pay for that cablegram. Goodbye, Roman. No, not goodbye. I hate goodbyes. What's the matter? Did you see me coming? What do you mean, Bill? Afraid of my finding out about you, too? There's nothing to find out, Bill. Except that you got fired from the bank on account of him. Why did you lie to me if it wasn't true? Why were you anxious to leave the dance when you saw him coming? Well, I was panicky, Bill. I didn't want to see him. I was afraid that you'd find out the things that people are saying about us and believe them. If it wasn't true, what did you have to be afraid of? I was afraid of losing you, Bill. And the only happiness I've ever known. So you tried to rush our marriage. Even your family tried to hurry us before I could find out. <laughs> and you expect me to believe it. No, Bill, you've got to understand. I can't understand their being out all night. Well, thank heaven she'll soon be married and all this worrying will be over with. Why, Bill! Well, Will you ask Ruth if I can see her? What's the... Well, what's the matter, Bill? We quarreled last night, and I want to talk to her. Tell her I've got to talk to her. Well, uh, Bill, she, uh, she hasn't come down yet. I, uh, I don't know. Maybe she's still asleep. But I tell you, Bill, sit down here and I'll go right up and see you. Uh, uh, give him a cup of coffee, Paul. Sure. Where's father? What are you trying to do? Throw away your only chance of getting married? Coming in at this time of the morning in an outfit like that? Are you insane? I'm sane for the first time in my life. Now, Bill Fadden's in that room. You get upstairs and change your clothes in a hurry. You can do your explaining later. I'll do all the explaining I'm going to do right now. Well, Bill? Ruth, I was a fool to say those things last night. It doesn't matter now. Oh, yes, it does. We can't let a quarrel like that stop our marriage. We'll be happy. You've got to forgive me. It isn't a case of my forgiving you now, Bill. The things you believed of me last night were lies. But this morning, they're the truth. I spent last night at Roma's house. And you couldn't forgive that, could you? No, I didn't think you could. Never mind, Dad. I only came back to say goodbye. Well, where are you going? I don't know. But I'll write, Mother. 
Goodbye, Dad. Where to, Roma? New York. I owe a minister a bet there. What about? Well, he bet that someday I'd meet a girl I'd never want to lose. And that he'd marry us. Say, did anyone ever tell you that your hair is... Is beautiful.